Hey everyone, it is Tuesday and as part of our expert series, you know who we bring back. We bring back Omar. How you doing, man? Good. How are you? Thank you for having me, Michael. Of course. I always appreciate our conversation. So we're going to run through three topics today. Uh, the first one is one that, you know, on Sunday, I had no idea that we'd be talking about. So let me kind of paint the picture. This is something that's on my mind. I'm going to share with you so you can react, double check, tell me if I had any blind spots because, you know, it's important to kind of stay on it when things change. So Monday, not sure if you saw this, we got some pretty good news from, I think it was Pfizer and uh, BioNTech that basically released some vaccine statistics that were better than expected, right? So not, not, to, not to bore you with the details, but all along we have been hoping for 50 to 60% effective, right? That's what we were right. hoping for. Uh, then what they shared is it's over 90% effective. And at least as of reported now, no horrible side effects, right? No life, si no, no horrible side effects. So in essence, it's like damn near a silver bullet, at least the data that I've read to this point. You can still argue who's going to take it, how long, all of that. I don't want to have that conversation. I want to have the conversation, okay. okay, what in my business model, if anything, needs to change? Because again, what do I what do I track? I track the consumer. Mm -hmm. And the consumer through most of 2020 has been scared. Yep. Uh, they've been saving. Uh, they've been running away from urban. They've been running away from apartments to houses, right? You and I have talked many of our videos in our playlist, folks. And again, Omar has a playlist. Go check it out on this channel. We've been talking about flipping, right? Buying slumlord properties fixing up to FHA <laughs> standards and selling them being like a once in a lifetime business model, right? It's just yep. like crazy. So I sat back all of yesterday going, do I change anything? Right. Cause what do I think happens? I think again, at the macro, the consumer now sees the end of this horrible health crisis, right? Is it March? Is it April? Is it May? I don't care. There's an end before it was this blank abyss, it was getting worse every day, you know, just horror, horror of horrors. And we're going into a second wave and winter's coming and Europe's locking down. And oh my God, the consumer is freaking out. So I'm like freaking out, freaking out. So I'm going, damn, does anything change? So, you know, I know you don't watch the news nearly as much as I do. What, what, what in that outline kind of sparked a question because I'm really sitting here 24 hours later going, do I change anything? And, and maybe the answer is no. But I, I have lots of questions running through my head right now. Yeah, and 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 Michael, being that if and when yeah. um, it is effective ninety percent, obviously for what the issue that we have here in twenty twenty. Yeah. Um, if that is effective ninety percent, well, you know what it's going to do? It's going to give a lot of people hope. Exactly. Hope. And over when people fear. have hope, hope over fear. over fear, exactly. And that hope is going to allow them yeah. to go out. Yeah. It's going to allow them to um, start their businesses again. It's going to allow them to go and um, pick up leases and, you know, be the entrepreneur that, that most people want to be. And yeah. they want to go open a business, this, that, but it's going to open up um, the ability to go purchase houses. I mean, my opinion, we're in the housing business. Yeah. You know, we, we buy and sell and we do our thing, but the consumer is backed by it. So if less people are scared more people have that hope because now there is a cure. Yeah. Um, then guess what's going to happen? Everyone's going to get happy and everyone's going to want to go back to the way it was. And hopefully that does happen because yeah. then it's going to feed the economy and hopefully we're yeah. good for the next couple of years. So I like that. I agree. So what I take from that is we've hit bottom. Okay. Right? We've hit bottom. We, we build out of this. We also see some segments of the economy that we're struggling again, turning around. You know, I'm thinking travel, hotels, I mean, casinos, Vegas. I mean, it's not going to be, it's, we're not going to go from hot to cold, you know, heads to tails immediately. But again, I think a bottom is in place. Uh, so I agree with all of that. But again, when I go back to is, okay, if we go back to normal, does that mean anything that I thought was special in 2020 just disappear? For example, do people stop leaving LA? I mean, just last week, you and I talked about 
or maybe it was two weeks ago, right? The baby boomer. Does the baby boomer sell their a L A Orange County house? Do they move to um, the the high desert, or do they keep going east to Vegas? Right. That we talked about that, and that was that people were doing it. Now yeah, they still it, are. Yeah, they still are. But let's fast forward to March. And now let's just pretend that, you know, we have to make assumptions. Let's assume the vaccine is as powerful as they say it is. Does that baby boomer, A, do they decide to sell or do they decide, you know what, Orange County ain't that bad. And if they do okay. sell, do they go to the high desert or do they go all the way to Vegas and for tax reasons? All of these questions I have to ask myself because, again, I think the world changed yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's kind of the question it I've been playing with. It, it, the, the perception changed yesterday. <clears throat> right. Okay. People's perception of what is coming changed. Yep. And, and I, I'm telling you, I mean, if you're plugged into the news, that is hope. Mm -hmm. So the news delivers something. They, yep. they deliver the information that's out there, whether it's one side or the other side, but it also gives the consumer some hope. So maybe they, they, they keep moving forward mm -hmm. and they don't sit there, you know, I'm not going to say sit, sit at home, but people's mentality is like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go yeah. anywhere. And mm -hmm. I find myself doing the same thing. You know, I mask up and everything else, but it's, I think it's allowing more people to uh, be faithful. Yeah. Like, Hey, I, I want to go and do something. And then to, to add to your point, Michael, about if the baby boomer is going to sell or not, um, well, this is this is my uh, opinion. Yeah. The market's still high. Yeah. Market's still high, and now it might give them a little bit more power and emphasis to sell their Orange County house for super top dollar yeah. and take all that money and then go put it somewhere else where where it's a lot less expensive and have more money left over. Yep. And they have a home. Enjoy that's the paid rest for. Yeah, they can really enjoy the rest of their life. Again, this hope thing is powerful. It's funny. I called that was the name of my video yesterday, right? Hope beat fear. Uh, yeah, and it, and it always does, folks. I truly believe hope always beats fear. It's just there are some times where fear is so dominant that we just we just can't see the light. The light switch came on. You can argue how far away it is, but without question, the light is on uh, because of Monday's news, which is awesome. Yeah. So the other thing I'm thinking about is. I'm going, so baby boomers on one side, again, I'm, I'm in the middle, right? I'm a Gen X like you, right? So baby boomers have been dominating everything in the world, but now the millennials are kicking ass, right? Cause they're now the largest population. Uh, I'm on, I'm on record in the data supports that millennials were be moving from class A renters to homeowners at record numbers. And now I'm like, okay, does the millennials, does the millennials who haven't left LA, for example, or San Francisco or New York, do they now suck it up, you know, get a little bit cheaper rent, stay in a city that's essentially shut down for another six to nine months? Because again, what did we get Monday? We got an end date. Before there right. was no end date. So people are like, screw it. I hate this place. It's never going to be the same. It's dead. I'm, I'm out of here. But if you haven't left already, do you leave now? And the kind of reverse of that is if you left, do you go back? There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are all just powerful questions, right? So, you know, I don't know what you think about that. I know, you know, the millennial buyer is going to be a driving force in the real estate world for the next 30 years. I think. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I think we're on the very early stages, like first inning to use a sports analogy. Um, yeah. I don't know what you think. What, what, what do you think is going on in the mind of a millennial a first time buyer today after yesterday? Um, you know, you're right about this whole first inning thing. We haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to see it because they are making money. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're figuring out ways to do it from the, the cell phone and yeah. make hundreds and thousands of dollars uh, literally with little to no or little to no time. I mean, yeah. literally, it, that, I know a lot of them that way. Yeah. And they don't know what to do with their money. They're buying cars or doing this. They're doing, you know, they're the flashy aspect of it. Right. But they will settle down and, and bank their money and they will buy real estate. I don't know when, but I have a feeling in over the next six, 12, you know, 18 months, we're going to see an influx two years. We're going to see a definite influx providing the market still sustained and it's solid. Yeah. And even if it's not, I mean, cause yeah. we don't know, uh, Michael yet, yet yesterday I was uh, looking at trends and you're big on this as well. You know, 
it's about a 13, 14 year trend before that last, uh, before the crash happened. Mm -hmm. And we're at year 12 from yeah. literally 2000, I would say nine yeah. at the very bottom or 2008, nine of the very bottom. So we're 11 and 12 years. Yeah. So we might have a couple more years, depending on if it's going to be the same, um, mm -hmm. you know, aspect of back in 92 and 93 when yeah, everything yeah. crashed in 92. Um, it's, it's weird. I was looking, I was like literally just focusing on that. And I'm like, okay, what's going to happen? And then the millennial aspect came up and it's like, okay, well, who's buying right right now? Yeah. And baby boomers are out, they're selling millennials are still going to, you know, they're going to start at a crazy number, my opinion. Right. Uh, I just want to be positioned and I'm sure you as well. Yeah. And then the last thing I'm thinking about with this vaccine is kind of the work from home, right? And I think it was last week we talked about, you have an office, I forget, 5,000 square feet or whatever it is, and no one's there. I remember you saying that last week or the week before. Yeah. Yes. And I'm like, okay, so what happens, right? Now, let's say the vaccine comes out. Let's just fast forward and pretend it's June of next year, right? Mm -hmm. Do you envision your office filling back up with people? Or do you think you've gotten to a point with work from home that you're just if as productive, if not more? And you're going to shrink your office space. I mean, it's inter interesting in real estate because it is a people business, but that's the mindset I'm, I'm thinking. I'm like, do businesses, you know, revert back to everybody has to come in or is this work from home trend, you know, kind of the, the horse has left the barn, if you will. Okay. I, I, I will add to this because this is huge. Um, I have a couple thousand square feet, which is nice and tight. Okay. And at one point I, we had 27 or 26 agents. Did they all show up? No, because people worked at home anyways before uh, the pandemic. But now no one's there. Right. There's maybe four people and it's, and it's okay. But I will tell you that this, this coming out of 90% and it's a potential to heal and to, to, to stop it all or to kill everything, it will allow people, people want to get back. My opinion, people want to get back to an environment to where they're going to thrive. And at home, I mean, even me being home now, I feel like I'm not as going to be as productive. And, and it's, that's just me. Sure. Um, I, I, I have adjusted and I worked a lot from home and I, and I like it, but I also love going into my office because it, it, it's the, it's the environment. It's the, um, it's the feeding of like, Hey, I'm here to do something and let's go. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what people are going to want to go back to my opinion, especially us that we are, we're self-motivated kind of individuals. We have to be, otherwise we don't make any money, mm -hmm. um, as, as realtors, brokers, investors, et cetera. Yep. Um, yeah. and I have a feeling that June, March, April, May, June of next year, yeah. I'll have an additional 10 you know, 10 agents that pop in, in addition to what our roster is now, because yeah. they're going to want to be around an environment that is, is flourishing. Yeah. I like that's this. my opinion. Yeah. So let's just close with one kind of like business aspect. You and I have talked about it again. I think we said this in the open flipping, buying slumlords to pride of ownership or first time home buyers is an awesome business today. Do you see that changing over the next 12 months? Uh, you know what, Michael, as long as everything stays the same with low inventory and interest rates phenomenally low, um, no, because people still buy and it will force people that rent to buy a house because it's so, it's so damn cheap. Um, their payment, not the value, but right. the payment, because no one looks at the value. People look at the payment, what they can afford Yeah, because that's what people rent. So I still think that we're going to be okay in the next 12 months, mm -hmm. because I don't see an influx of inventory whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I'm getting phone calls of people. Hey, can you come sell my house, sell my house, sell my house on the listing aspect on the brokerage side, because people, you know, they, they, they want to either move out of California or whatever the case, mm -hmm. but it's okay. I'll, I'll service them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of in the same boat. I, I, I think I came to this like at eight or nine o'clock last night. If I can get into a slumlord property today and get out of it by April, May of next year, I'll do that deal all day long. It's yes. Interest rates are going anywhere. Inventory is not going up, but you know, I'm thinking of next summer, right? We kind of skipped a selling season, right? With, by staying home. I am wondering, does inventory come back next summer in a huge way, right? Is it 150% of normal? And I just don't know yet. 
So that's kind of where I'm at, right? If I can get in and out of a project by April of 2021, done deal all day. I don't know. Question, do you buy? Hmm. Do I buy? Go ahead. Yeah, I buy. I buy today. I buy all the junkers I can today. But I got to be. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. You, You and I both. Yeah. Do you buy in June? I don't know. In July. I don't know. Let's just play this out because I think it's going to go one of two ways. Okay. Um, I guess it has to go one of two ways. I, either we're going to continue with record low inventory, which okay. if we do, prices are going to shoot up because to our earlier point, the economy is going to be booming, right? <laughs> For, <laughs> it's yeah, just I'm going to be going. Um, in fact, the only thing that could slow it down if it, if it have no inventory is if interest rates rise. And it's possible, but probably not next year. Or this is the this is my, I don't know fear. I, it's not really a fear, but this is what I think is going to happen. I think we're going to come out of this next year, in June, and people are going to be excited. Back to the hope. Uh, not only okay. hope they're going to be excited. So what does that mean? People that didn't sell this last spring, and the people that want to sell next spring, it's going to it's going to bolt up, and it's going to be lots of people going bigger, right? What, what is, what, what haven't we had? We haven't had the move up buyer, right? First Not time, really. It's the yeah. first time buyer is hot, but the people that we're missing is the move up buyer, right? Cause it usually goes first time move up McMansion or whatever you call that last jump. <laughs> it's that move up buyer that we, that's been like, I'm too scared. I'm going to sit tight. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. What I have, I'm just going to paint my house. I'm going to add tile in the bathroom. They've just been, they've been playing with their nest. Right. Next summer, small business raging, jobs are more plentiful, unemployment's under six. Um, you know, we're healing. People are vibing, stock markets up. People are going to be like, you know what? I want that bigger house. I want to move to the nicer part of town. So, dude, we could see we could see some really large inventory jumps in the first time buyer category. I mean, that's that's what I'm thinking. And and you know, that's that summer. I mean, it, uh, we're playing, like I'm playing, just like you said, I'm playing for March, April, May right. of getting rid of all of my, you know, yeah. junker houses, yeah. taking yeah. care of them, put them on the market. And that's what I'm playing on because Absolutely. I just went heavy the last, you know, 45 days. Yesterday, we picked up, I think, three, three or yeah. four contracts that I sent out. Yeah. And, and, and Michael, some of them are, are a buck 70 with tenants in them. Yeah. Another one is four and a quarter but sells for 600. I mean, it, it, it's going to be there still. Yeah. Like I'm banking on it and, and knock on wood everywhere, right. but I don't see this interest rate increasing until if it does might be July, August. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and if that happens, then it's just, everybody puts their houses on the market and then, then what? Yeah, no, I agree. Then what? Very, very cool. So this has been fun. I look forward to conversation number two. Thanks Omar. All right. You're welcome. Thanks.